Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Jack Tretton. Wow. Thank God you guys showed up. <laughs> Given this industry's ability to keep confidential information, I was concerned that there really wouldn't be anything to be said at uh, these press conferences. <laughs> And you know, we consider ourselves to be industry leaders at PlayStation, and press leaks are no exception. We are not going to be outdone by anybody. <laughs> uh, my heartbeat is redlining at about 230 beats per minute right now. Uh, I can't tell you the, the pressure it is to get up in front of a live television audience, probably 5,000 members of uh, the industry and your uh, Press colleagues up in the uh, upper balcony, down in the lower balcony, uh, really appreciate you guys all being here. But the, the biggest sense of pressure that I feel is trying to do justice to the 364 games we have coming out on PlayStation platforms this year. And you're going to see a ton of live code. Thank you. You're going to see a ton of live code on the screen that stands 40 by 80. And only the PlayStation 3 can show you the resolution you're going to see on a screen that size. So on behalf of everyone at Sony Computer Entertainment America, I want to welcome you back to the historic Shrine Auditorium. You know, we constantly have to remind ourselves that despite all the pressure, we're in the entertainment business. And if consumers are spending valuable and limited spare time on our products, then clearly we're being successful. And we're going to show you this morning why PlayStation is going to continue to be the mainstay of this industry. We've been committed to groundbreaking innovation and creativity since we entered this industry 15 years ago. And today's presentation is a testament to those ideals. You'll see why 2009 will be our best year ever, even better than the record year we had in 2008. As the only player with three successful platforms at once, we provide an entertainment experience second to none. Something for every taste, every budget, and every need. All told, PlayStation generated more than 30% of total retail sales for the industry in 2008. It was a record year of growth and momentum for us, and it's just the beginning of what we expect in 2009. Back in April, we held a pre-E3 Gamers Day and showed some blockbuster exclusive titles we have coming out this year. And just by that short glimpse, many of you were saying that this was the best lineup on PlayStation to date. I know you're aware some of the industry's biggest titles are coming to PS3. Titles like Modern Warfare 2, Final Fantasy 13, Ratchet and Clank Future, A Crack in Time, Batman Arkham Asylum, Heavy Rain, Rock Band Beatles, and many more. When you look at the list, it's abundantly clear. In 2009, if you want to have the ultimate gaming experience, you need PlayStation. Now let's get started with the PlayStation 2. As I'm sure you know, PlayStation 2 is now retailing for $99, and the consumer response has been phenomenal. Last month's NPD numbers were impressive, but we also drove an additional 30% of our sales through distribution, Canada, and Latin America. And the fact that PS2 outsold next-gen systems in April is telling, but what's really amazing is that we did it in its ninth year, a true testament to why we talk so much about the 10-year product life cycle. But make no mistake, we don't intend to see an end to PS2 after 10 years. We're committed to this system as long as consumers see value in it. Now, we added nearly 9 million PS2 users globally uh, to the PlayStation family last year. And now at $99, with more than 2,000 titles available, PlayStation 2 continues to be a huge value for consumers and a profit opportunity for publishers and retailers. PS2 remains the perfect family console with games for everyone. And this year, we're pleased to announce PlayStation 2 will feature nearly 100 new titles, including your favorite franchises. And remember, every time you see somebody purchase PS2 hardware or software this year, today's PS2 owners are ultimately tomorrow's PS3 consumers. 
A year ago, I stood on this stage and said that our goal in fiscal 2009 was to sell 10 million new PS3s, and that's precisely what we did. We grew the PS3 install base by 40% in 2008 and topped 22 million units sold globally. And as many of you have heard us announce, the fiscal forecast for 2010, which represents a total increase of 30% to a total of 13 million PS3s. Now last year, Sackboy helped me announce that we were further expanding our presence in Latin America. Our retail sales in this territory have nearly tripled, and the rollout continues into Brazil, Uruguay, and Paraguay later this year. And we expect retail sales in the region to climb to three quarters of a billion dollars. Now thanks to great content and service enhancements, PlayStation Network had a monster year in 2008. We've seen the total registered accounts grow to more than 24 million worldwide, and we expect to see even more growth in 2009. Now, corporate stats are a testament to our success, but those numbers are derived from consumer acceptance. So let's talk about what consumers really care about, great games. I suspect the reason that some of you have bags under your eyes is because you've been playing Infamous nonstop since it came out last week. With ratings at 90% or higher at places like IGN, Game Informer, GameSpot, and Game Trailers, Infamous has quickly become this summer's biggest blockbuster title, and it's only available on PlayStation 3. It's one of the more than 35 exclusive titles coming out in 2009 that you'll only find on PlayStation. And PlayStation has always been associated with great games and the industry's best developers and a team that's been near and dear to my heart since they created Crash Bandicoot on the original PlayStation is Naughty Dog. <laughs> Uncharted Drake's Fortune was a groundbreaking title on PS3, selling more than 2.6 million units globally. So it's my pleasure to introduce Evan Wells, co-president of Naughty Dog, to show you Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. Thanks, Jack. Naughty Dog has had a 15-year tradition of pushing the PlayStation hardware to its limits, and we feel that Uncharted 2 sets the new gold standard in limit pushing, and it is easily our most ambitious project to date. Last month, we finally got to show you our brand new competitive and cooperative multiplayer modes that we've been working on for the past two years. And starting tonight, at midnight, you can join us in the Uncharted 2 multiplayer beta. But we promised we'd be back to show you more of our single-player campaign. So today, you'll see what is not only one of the best technical showcases on any platform, but an active cinematic experience like no other game out there. So I'd rather show you than tell you. So let's cut to the chase. Here is Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. Okay, this way. What do you reckon? We're gonna have to climb that thing? Yeah, that's usually what happens. Let's get moving. Damn it. How the hell do we get across? Looks like we're going to have to shimmy across that beam. Oh, God, be careful. Holy shit. Give me your hand. Just go!
So be sure to check out more on Uncharted 2 in the Sony booth. Thanks, Jack. How cool is that? I think you'll all agree Uncharted 2 is one of the best looking games we've ever seen. Oftentimes you hear us talk about only on PlayStation. It's not just a quantitative statement. More often than not, it's a qualitative one. It means only possible on PlayStation. That's a theme you'll hear us talk a lot about today. I'm excited about this no next game, not just for one reason, but for 256 reasons. We introduced MAG on this stage to a lot of fanfare last year, and today we'd like to show you the first public unveiling of live gameplay. Here to show you this massive game is Andy Bodwin of Zipper Interactive. Andy? So it was about a year ago that I had the opportunity to tell you about the latest game we were working on in Zipper Interactive. That game is MAG, a new first-person shooter that pits 256 players against each other on the field of battle. Well, here we are. It's a year later, and I'm pleased to be here again, this time with eight other members of the Zipper team. Not just to talk about MAG, but to show you a live 256-player MAG battle. So now, before we start, I want to remind you that every action you're about to see or hear, from the distant chatter of a machine gun being fired by a developer in Seattle, to an airstrike called in by a tester in San Diego, has been triggered by a real player. Now, the battle you're about to watch is a Raven assault on a Sever Fuel Depot. CJ Heine, MAG's lead level designer, is acting as our squad leader today. Now, if we take a look at CJ's command network interface, you can get a feel of the scale of this battle. CJ's squad of eight, along with other three squads in his platoon, must punch through a line of enemy bunkers, secure a forward landing zone, and push forward to the heart of the enemy facility. Now, if we pull back just a bit, you can see that his squad isn't alone. His platoon is one of four that make up the Raven Company assaulting this base. Now, each blue dot you see is a live player participating in the battle right now. But remember that for each blue dot you see, there's also a red enemy, most of whom are currently undetected. So to start his assault, CJ is going to use one of his squad leader command abilities to call in a recon UAV to scout out those enemy locations. UAV 
Now unfortunately, the enemy has an anti-aircraft battery that's up and running, and it's gonna shoot down his airstrike as it comes in. So he's gonna to have to go in with a little bit less information than he hoped, and go from there. So these are all the squad members we see on screen that are up here on the stage today. They're gonna to move out. Siege is gonna assign the first objective to his team, which is to assault a bunker. This bunker serves as a forward spawn for the enemy, so if they can destroy it, they'll manage to put the defenders back farther into the heart of the base. So there's the bunker in front of us. Now as we assault, we're going to switch over and take a look at uh, the platoon leader perspective for Ben Jones. Now these bunkers are very challenging targets. They have to go in, plant a charge at the base of it. They can attack the turret on top from distance, but if they have to get in close to plant the charge and defend that charge for a period of time while the defenders try to defuse it. There you can see now as the actions he's taking, because this objective has been assigned to the squad, he's gonna get bonus points for every action he takes. So now that they've managed to destroy that bunker, it's going to push all the defenders back farther into the heart of the base. His team's going to move up, plant charges once again on that anti-aircraft battery that was causing him so much trouble earlier, and defend that. Now taking care of this will do a couple of things, give a couple of advantages to his team. First and foremost, it will allow the commanders to call in airstrikes as they battle, but it's also going to secure this as a forward spawn point for his team, which we'll see in a moment here. You can hear that air raid siren, lets everybody in the battle, no matter which platoon they're in, know that the uh, attackers in this area have secured that forward spawn. And now we have helicopters coming in, which serve as the forward deployment point for his team. So if anybody in his squad dies from this point forward, they will respawn those helicopters and be able to push forward. And they're also very powerful at securing this landing zone. They're all equipped with mini guns, once again, all commanded by real players. So now that they've managed to secure this forward landing zone, CD's going to use another one of his command abilities. He tried to call on a UAV earlier, but now he's going to use uh, an airstrike. He's going to call on a cluster bomb to clear the enemy off this wall and secure the point so his team can push forward and hit the heart of this facility. So obviously devastating strike, it's cleared the enemy off this position. Now his team has a few moments before the enemies respawn, secure that wall again. So they're gonna push in and set a foothold to push into the heart of the base where they'll link up with all four platoons for the final assault on this objective. Now I do hope you're all were taking notes because we're gonna have this game running live on the show floor for the next three days with full 256 players. Come down there, pick up a control, and join the battle. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Andy. I know we're looking forward to MAG making its debut on PlayStation 3 this fall. So let's go. <laughs> so let's go from massively multiplayer console gaming to our portable platform. When the PSP first came out five years ago, it was designed for portability and multimedia consumption. Over time, it became slimmer and lighter with a better LCD screen and our content and services have continued to improve with it. We've had everything from applications like Skype and internet radio to nearly 400 PSP titles in North America alone, including many of the industry's most storied franchises. PlayStation Portable features blockbuster titles like Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII, uh, Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron, Madden NFL 09, and of course, God of War Chains of Olympus. For gamers looking for a richer, deeper, and more engaging portable experience, the PSP has no equal. And last year, 15 million people came to the same conclusion, pushing our global install base to more than 50 million units. Over the past two years, much of that growth has been fueled by content offerings we've bundled with PSP, and this year will be no different. 
At Destination PlayStation, we announced a variety of entertainment packs for PSP, including bundles with Rock Band Unplugged coming out next week. The City of Final Fantasy will be launching on August 25th, and we follow that up with Assassin's Creed Bloodlines coming out on November 10th. We also outlined some of our plans to expand PSP to reach to a younger, more diverse demographic and further appeal to teen and tween girls. For starters, we're working with Disney to launch a Hannah Montana bundle, compete with a lilac-colored PSP this July. <laughs> Just sold a few right there, that's awesome. <laughs> We're bringing a host of other content to PSP for this audience later this year, including Pets, Loco Roco 2, Pat Upon 2, and Rock Band. Not to mention a lot of great movie and TV content from partners like Disney and Nickelodeon. Not only do we have something for everyone from a content perspective, but when paired with PlayStation 3, PSP is in a class all its own, and it's a true game changer for the industry. To tell you more about this vision, I'd like to introduce the president of Sony's Network Products and Services Group and the president and CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment, Kaz Sarai. Thanks, Jack. I'm really, be, I'm really excited to be back here on stage here at E3. Uh, I was part of the crowd last year, but I couldn't resist the temptation to be back on stage this year again. So uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be back on stage. So PlayStation grew from infancy to adolescence in the very heart of the digital era. And PlayStation's evolution has tracked precisely with, and obviously in many cases, helped lead the increasing comfort consumers have with digital technology. And two years ago, we sought to understand more about how consumers were using that digital technology. So naturally, we went on the road, visiting with publishers, developers, and gamers to ask how we could make the PSP better. And this feedback actually went right back to our engineering team and led to changes in the design and the features of the PSP. So it's my pleasure today to officially introduce the next step in the evolution of the PlayStation Portable. For those who live a more digital lifestyle, who are downloading content across the network, who no longer need or desire tangible media like UMDs, CDs, or DVDs in their homes or backpacks or in their briefcases. And I have it right here in my pocket. Here it is. We actually have uh, a couple of names for this beautiful little device. First, we call it the worst kept secret of E3. And we call it PSP Go. PSP Go represents a new evolution of PSP, specifically designed for the digital lifestyle. And let me be very clear, the PSP Go will not replace the PSP 3000 or the UMD and we will continue to support and market the PSP 3000 alongside the PSP Go. For users of digital content, it represents an object of desire as well as an object of functionality. It's got a great screen, the same great operating system, integrated Wi-Fi, and plays the same terrific games. But its size is really built for the digital consumer. In fact, the PSP Go is actually more than 50% smaller and 40% lighter than the original PSP 1000. So the PSP Go is designed for the digital lifestyle, offering 16 gigabytes of internal flash memory to store plenty of games, videos, music, and of course your photos. And you'll be able to download games and movies and other content from the free PlayStation Network using the PSP Go's built-in Wi-Fi. And as you can see, the PSP Go also has a slide-out feature for the controls integrated Bluetooth technology, and a new memory stick micromedia port, also known as M2, for adding even more memory to the system. And as Jack mentioned, 2009 will see more big franchise titles released on PSP than any other time in the history of the PSP platform. But we're also working to make the experience easier and more enjoyable. 
So for starters, today we're launching a new application used to access the PlayStation Store on the PC that makes it so much more easier to manage your content across your PC and your PSP, and it's called Media Go. Media Go has replaced the current version of the Media Manager and is now the application used to access the PlayStation Store directly from your PC. It makes content transfer of pictures and movies and music that much easier with really a much more intuitive interface. And clearly, the ability to consume all forms of media on the PSP is very crucial. And we have seen an increase in music usage on the PSP system recently. And in response, we're going to introduce a new application specific to the PSP. And this application is called SenseMe. So incorporating a 12-tone technology recognition system, SenseMe will analyze your music library to deliver a playlist based on the moods that you select. Launching on PSP and PSP Gold this fall, SenseMe really enhances the music experience so that you can easily enjoy the mood and the tracks to fit your mood and occasion. And this year, continuing the momentum that we've built for content on PSP, we're going to also lower the price of the PSP toolkits. Specifically, as part of a longer term program, it will be an 80% reduction in the cost of the tools, allowing more developers as well as individuals to put even more great content on the PSP. What all of these things I'm talking about today have in common is this. They're all designed to bring new content to PSP from games, videos, and music, and make it a whole lot easier to connect directly wherever you go. And most importantly, all PSP titles moving forward will be digitally distributed via the PlayStation Store and at retail via UMD as well. Now, we know that all PSPs on the market are able to connect and store downloaded content, and we also know that many existing PSP owners still want to buy a physical product. So whether your device of choice is the PSP 3000 or the PSP Go, all of the services and features and functionality are there in every device. And we're constantly looking to strengthen the experience and provide the best content that is available. So ultimately, the PSP Go is one more proof point that PlayStation offers the future of entertainment technologies. The PSP Go will be available in stores in North America and in Europe at the same price point that we launched the original PSP. What does that mean? It'll be $249 and €249 Euros and available on October 1st in North America and in Europe. And for 26,800 26, yen on November 1st in Japan. So with PSP Go living side by side with the PSP 3000 at $169, there's a great choice for everyone looking for entertainment on the go. Now let me talk a little bit about the video delivery service. At E3 last year, we launched a video delivery service that seamlessly delivered content that can be enjoyed in your living room or on the go. And since its debut on this stage last July, the video delivery service has had more than 1,900 movies and now more than 9,400 TV shows available. And starting today, I'd like to announce that the video delivery service will be available natively on the PSP as well. Thank you. Now it's going to be easier than ever to download video or gaming content directly to your PSP. And we're also in the process of adding more content to the PlayStation, PlayStation Store as well. And we've signed partnerships with a host of new providers. And today, we'll be launching content from Showtime, G4, E, HDNet, Stars TV, TNA, Magnolia Films, and a variety of new anime as well as sports partners as well. So the bottom line is this. There will be more content that is easier to get onto your PSP. And as Jack said earlier, PlayStation has something for everyone wherever they want to go. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the founder of Polyphony Digital and the father of Gran Turismo, Kazunori Yamauchi.
っと、えー、皆さんにですね、えー、今日、えー、この場であの本当に長い時間、えー、お待たせしていた、えー、グランツーリスモ PSP の、えー、発表ができることを、えー、本当に光栄に思っています。Uh, To be given this opportunity to announce Gran Turismo PSP that I know everyone has been waiting for so long. As you can see here, Gran Turismo is running on the small PSP Go. The PSP Go is a very, very small piece of hardware, but What the Gran Turismo that's running inside it is a full scale Gran Turismo.、えっとね、it's running at 60 frames per second.、えっとえー、Gran Turismo PSP のの内容を皆さんに紹介しましまょう。I'd like to take this opportunity to talk a bit about the game.、えー、まずゲームのスケールですけれども、えー、この Gran Turismo PSP には800台以上の車が収録され、35コース、60レイアウト以上の景観、トラックが収録されます。Uh, regarding volume and the scale,、uh, Gran Turismo PSP contains 800 cars, 35 tracks, and 60 layout variations of those tracks.、えー、game mode is a single player mode, which is a race in the race, time trial, drift trial, and Gran Turismo is a game mode, which is a license of mission challenge mode. Single player mode contains standard races. Time trials and drift trials, and there is a mission challenge mode that includes the legacy license mode of Gran Turismo where you can learn your driving skills.、えーねえーののえーえー、the Gran Turismo is a small machine, but it is not a set of Gran Turismo. In that respect, though it is running on such a small piece of hardware, this Gran Turismo PSP actually offers a full size Gran Turismo experience. This is not a, an A shrunken down subset of the series.、えーねえーねえー、in addition to the portable system, we've added features especially suited for a portable system like this PSP that utilizes the ad hoc mode,、uh, enabling you to race together with up to four players. それからグランツレスの PSP ならではのユニークな機能として同じアドホックモードを通じてプレイヤーとプレイヤーの間のガレージの内容をですねお互いに車をトレードしたりあるいはシェアをしたりそういうことができるようになっています。And another feature that is also geared specifically for the PSP is the trading and sharing of cars between your garage and the garages of other players. えー、全部で800台以上もの車ですから、えー、当然1人で、えー、それを全部獲得するというのは大変、えー、困難な作業になるわけですが、えー、今回のグランツリスモ PSP では、えー、言ってみれば友達みんなで、えー、その車たちを、えー、獲得していけるように、えー、設計されているということです。Uh, えー、PSP を持って、えー、友達に会いに行く、えー、車のトレーディングをしに会いに行く、えー、友達同士で集まる、えー、そこでコミュニケーションが行われて、えー、お互いのガレージに車が入る、えー、そういった、えー、行為そのものがですね、えー、グランツリスモ PSP というゲームの一部であるというふうに僕は思っています。Uh, to have people meet with others and connect in ad hoc mode. Uh, to take your PSP and gather all your friends is something that I think is a, an important part of Gran Turismo PSP.、えーねえー、PSP is running on this. Uh, we have many Gran Turismo PSPs on display at the E3 show floor today.、Uh, I'd like you all, you all to take a look and see for yourself with your own eyes that Gran Turismo is really up and running on this compact piece of hardware.、えー最後にですね、僕らポリポリデジタルが、えー、グランツリスモ PSP についての、えー、とビデオを、えー、作って、えー、用意してますので、えー、それを、えー、皆さんにご覧いただきたいと思います。えー、今日はですね、本当にお時間を割いていただいてありがとうございました。
And finally, uh, I'd like you all to take a look at a video we've prepared for Gran Turismo PSP to show everyone. And uh, thank you all for your time today. Thank you, Kazunori, and I look forward to having Kazunori share some of the cars he has in my garage, or his garage, with, uh, with the cars that I have in my garage as well. Um, it's really no wonder that the GT titles have sold more than 52 million units worldwide and have really helped to define the PlayStation brand as best-in-class gaming. And we're looking forward to the industry's best driving experience coming to the PSP this fall, October 1st, to help celebrate the launch of PSP Go. And now, quality and authenticity means everything in this industry, especially when it's coming from the Metal Gear Solid family. Yeah.
Sounds like we got a lot of your favorites in there. And I'm sure you can see PlayStation Portable is set to have a tremendous year. A lot of content and services we've been talking about have one thing in common. They're all part of the PlayStation Network. PSN comes to E3 with momentum on our side. It now has more than 24 million registered users around the world, including more than 11 million in North America. These consumers have downloaded more than 475 million pieces of content worldwide. And in the past year alone, our install base of unique consoles has grown 150%. There's more than 200 titles currently available on the PlayStation Store, and more than 90 of them are exclusive. One of the biggest strengths of the PlayStation Network is that its connected PS3 and PSP consumers have a direct relationship with us and millions of gamers around the world. Free Wi-Fi in every unit makes it easy, and free connectivity to the PlayStation Network makes it painless. With PlayStation Network, you get tons of additional content, connectivity, and community interaction with no hidden fees. In addition, we're adding nearly 50 PS1 classics to the PlayStation Store starting this year, and starting today with the launch of Final Fantasy VII. We've always believed by offering uh, free access to online gameplay, we could aggregate a huge audience quickly, and that's exactly what we're doing. One of the other things we're excited about on PlayStation Network today is the rapid growth and the momentum of PlayStation Home. As you all know, Home is an ever-evolving 3D social network that represents the PlayStation community. Built for PS3 users to meet, chat, share, and launch into gaming experiences together. With more than 6.5 million people worldwide, Home has quickly become the de facto standard for the world's console gaming community, and it's only available and only possible on the PlayStation 3. Home is growing by leaps and bounds with over 100 virtual items coming to Home each month. The buzz this dynamic new marketplace creates is remarkable. For example, Capcom Street Fighter IV and Resident Evil virtual items have sold approximately 100,000 units in less than two months. Home spaces have a similar impact on the PlayStation community. In April, the EA Sports Complex launched and experienced more than 1.5 million engagements in just one month. We're working further to expand home with some killer new content for franchises like Infamous, Buzz, and SOCOM, as well as titles from key publishers such as EA, Ubisoft, Activision, Capcom, Namco, and Eidos. It all goes back to gamers wanting to connect around their favorite games and franchises in ways that are deeper, more meaningful, and extend beyond what is possible on other consoles. For those of you who haven't seen what's going on in home recently, here's a quick video to show you how far the platform has come since we launched it six short months ago.
Thank you. Just so you know, I'm the guy with the mohawk and my handle's Mr. T, so maybe I'll see some of you guys out there. Uh, you've heard it from us time and time again. Uh, 2009 is gonna be all about content on the PlayStation 3. As I said at the beginning of the presentation, it's virtually impossible to do justice to all the great content coming to PS3 this year. So we're gonna roll a video that shows off a sample of what's on tap for PlayStation 3.
There's a lot of amazing games in there. From Infinity Ward's Modern Warfare 2 to Capcom's Lost Planet 2, which will be shipping in early 2010, we're proud of the fact that over the past 15 years, the greatest franchises in the industry have been synonymous with PlayStation platforms. For more than a decade, Rockstar Games have been delivering unrivaled interactive experiences to fans all over the world. Grand Theft Auto, Bully, Midnight Club, and Manhunt all began on PlayStation. Today, we'd like to announce a new property coming from Rockstar North. It's called Agent, and it will be exclusive to PlayStation 3. Agent will take a player across the globe amidst the shadowy world of espionage and assassins in the darkest hours of the late 1970s. It's clear that Rockstar recognizes PlayStation as an ideal place to build an audience, and that's why we're thrilled to have Agent coming exclusively to PlayStation. You're all aware of the impact GTA had on our platforms, and we expect Agent to have the same must-have value. Now, Ubisoft Assassin's Creed is a franchise that took the industry by storm in 2007 and went on to sell more than 8 million units globally. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Sebastian Poole and Patrice Desiletz from Ubisoft to show us Assassin's Creed 2 on PS3. Hello, everyone. I am very happy and excited to be here to present you Assassin's Creed 2. The original vision of the Assassin's Creed universe needed a sequel, and here it is. The general direction I gave to the team for AC2 was quite simple. Diversity. Give players more options in all aspects of the game. This demo will give you a glimpse of what to expect. Sebastien? AC2 starts right where AC1 ended, with Desmond Miles using the Animus machine to relieve an ancestor's life. But this time, he will experience a different time period, the Italian Renaissance. Ezio, Leonardo says that the machine is ready. It's at the top of the tower. It's you! Meet Desmond's new ancestor, Ezio. Ezio Auditore da Firenze. The Italian Renaissance gave us the perfect setting to exploit what was so great in AC1. Believable crowds, dangerous times, and beautiful open cities. All that during a pivotal moment in history. The birth of the modern world. Ezio's story is about a young Florentine noble on a quest for vengeance. It's about someone who had to deal with a great loss. To help character progression, We've construct, constructed our game sorry, around someone who isn't an assassin at first. But we'll learn to become one with the help of some friends. Leonardo da Vinci is one of those friends. Ezio will use him as his own personal inventor. Leonardo will make him weapon upgrades, gadgets and machine, like we have here. His famous flying machine. The flying machine is a good example of the diversity of experience found in AC2. The fire that you see around Venice gives speed and altitude to the glider. And Ezio can even take some enemies down his path. The target Ezio is after is hidden inside the Palazzo Ducal that you see right here. And to, the only way to get to him is from the sky. Assassin! Show yourself! Or are you afraid? 
We work hard also on giving more assassination techniques to Ezio, making him even deadlier than his crusade's counterpart, Altair. Good use of the double hidden blade here, Sebastian. Here we have an example of our new AI archetype, the Seeker. Hiding spots are not so safe anymore. There he is! Portatemi la sua testa! We wanted Ezio to be an assassin before being a warrior, which is why he is so good with his bare hands. He lets them disarm his enemies and use their weapons against them. There will be over 30 different weapons in the final game, not to mention the six additional unique weapons you will be able to unlock if you play Assassin's Creed Bloodlines on the PSP and connect it to your PS3. It's your target, Carlo Grimaldi. You really are the devil. Wait, I'm sure we can come to an arrangement. I'll give you anything you want. Name your I make this sacrifice for the greater good. Requiescat in pace. So you're surrounded. Let's use a, a smoke bomb. Just another example of the diversity of tools you will have at your disposal. Thank you, thank you. So this was the AC2 E3 demo. I hope you enjoyed it. But I must inform you, the game is massive in scope. This is just a short sample. You'll have the opportunity to experience it at its fullest really soon. Assassin's Creed 2 and Assassin's Creed Bloodline on the PSP will be on the store shelf this holiday. Thank you and have a great E3. Thanks very much, Sebastian and Patrice. Clearly, the interoperability between the PS3 and the PSP is a key component to franchise extension. It truly differentiates the PlayStation, and we're glad to see Ubisoft incorporating that into Assassin's Creed franchises across PSP and PS3. Now, if there's ever been a franchise that has more consistently raised the bar with every single new fantasy, it's the dream workers at Square Enix that have brought us more than a dozen different versions of the Final Fantasy epic. You all know Final Fantasy 13 will be coming to PlayStation 3 in the spring, and I'd like to show you a video they've prepared to whet your appetite. The whole world was against us. With us dead, everyone was sure that things would go back. Back to the way they were before. Look at that. Just what we were looking for. Yeah. Right in there. Pulse file C, huh? Cocoon is caught in the grip of a pulse-born terror. These pulseless C threaten our very way of life. They must be eliminated. Over and out. We got one of them. Do be careful with those. For every task, there's a perfect tool. Time to jump. Hey, 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 hang on! doing? So what are you afraid of, huh? You're supposed to be the hero. Just say it! Any Lassie! 
anyone who might even become one. They all ought to be wiped off Cocoon. The only way of completing the focus is to take out the postless sea. Ends with us dead. The whole world's out to get us. I can barely keep myself alive, let alone some kid. Just leave the rescue to me. What's wrong with you? You want to help on the sea? They're the enemy! As far as Falsi are concerned, humans are tools. I'm not gonna die for one of them. So, what do we do? Destroy it. See. What? You gonna ask it for help? I'm not just gonna stand here and wait around. Uh. What? Lightning. PlayStation. We're very excited about Final Fantasy 13, but Square Enix isn't stopping there. They're also hard at work on the title that comes after that. And I'm proud to introduce and show the first footage anywhere of Final Fantasy XIV. And PlayStation 3 will be the only console you'll be able to play Final Fantasy XIV on when it launches in 2010. So there's one that didn't leak out, huh? <laughs> We've shown you titles for hardcore gamers, teen and tween girls, and everything in between on all three platforms. We're not just here to talk about what's coming this holiday season, but what's going to keep everyone excited for the next few years. Motion controlled gaming has been a phenomenon that's been attracting a great deal of consumers the last few years. And we know a little something about this space as we introduced the first true motion controller back on the PlayStation 2 with iToy. Shortly after the launch of PS3, we introduced the next generation camera that was designed for both gaming and video conferencing via PlayStation Network. This technology will continue to grow in many ways. We're working to create an experience that is much closer to real life than anything you've ever seen. I'd like to invite Dr. Richard Marks and Anthony Mikhailov, creative forces behind the PlayStation Motion Controller to help show you a bit of what I'm talking about.
Nice, Jack. It's been a few years since I was up here on the stage at E3 showing you the first true motion controller, the PlayStation 2 iToy. As an engineer, I'm very excited about the technology we're going to show off today. It far surpasses anything you can get on the market now. We've been hard at work on this interface technology for a few years, and our goal is to add to the PS3's interactive capabilities. We want to enable a completely new set of experiences for PlayStation 3. So what I have in my hand here is a prototype of a new controller. Its final look will, be, will change, so I want to stress this is an engineering prototype. But it has a variety of buttons and internal motion sensors, but its most distinctive and cool feature is the glowing sphere on the end that the PlayStation Eye can track. Imagine you're, you're playing an RPG game, you choose fireball spell, the color in your hand changes, and then you throw to cast your spell. But rather than listening to me just talk about it, let's get started showing you some tech demos of what this thing can do. We're not going to show any video at all. Everything you're going to see is live technology demonstration. Anton's going to demo, and I'm going to explain what's happening on, on screen. Hey, guys. So actually, I want to point out, on the sides up here, you can see video from different angles of Anton as he plays. So this first demo, what we have is like a, te a virtual television set with a PlayStation Eye, just like we have set up here on stage. So you can see when Anton moves the controller here, the controller moves one to one just as he moves. In order to let you see this better, Anton, if you can uh, turn on the video on the television there, we're putting the PlayStation Eyes video on this virtual TV. So you can see as Anton moves, from, it moves exactly as he moves. This is true one-to-one -one tracking. This is the first time you've ever been able to do this. And we can show this better than anyone else because we have the video from the PlayStation Eye. That racket is actually in the virtual world. It's in Anton's hand. <laughs> it's still hard. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> So sports, sports are kind of a no-brainer, but you could hold anything in your hand. I do want to point out, notice how fast it's tracking his motions. All right, let's try this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My, you know, so, uh, oh, we weapons are always good. Especially large ones. So my son loves this demo, actually. He, you can imagine if he, he could be Ratchet and he could hold Ratchet's weapons in his hand while he plays. That, he would die for that. <laughs> okay, we have a flashlight now. Notice we have true 3D pointing. He can move around and point from any position or angle here. Okay, the flashlight's pretty cool, but do you have anything with a little more firepower, maybe? Oh, yeah. A foam dart. Nice shot, though. All right, uh, more firepower. Ah, uh, now we're talking. Gold Desert Eagle. So, of course, the PlayStation. This new controller and motion control in general, people have thought are more of a casual experience. And we expect very great casual experiences. But we also want to enable some more gamers games. We think that'll be a great use of this controller too. So if you want to switch to first person shooter mode, Anton can actually move around the room and point and shoot things. My hands weren't so jittery, I could actually hit something. We learned from iToy that buttons are needed for some experiences. There, it's, there's some experiences you can do without them, but some experiences there's just no other way to do. There's really no other way to do this without a trigger. It just wouldn't feel right. OK, so let's see. what. Anything else? We got one more thing. 
This is always difficult. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, you can imagine the kind of special effects we could overlay with the video and the, and the graphics here. Now, we're going to switch gears completely here. This next demo, it may look simple, but it's one of the hardest things to do precisely. Anton is effectively reaching into the scene, bridging the gap between the real and virtual worlds. This is the foundation for the ultimate sandbox. You could build anything in this. The game development is really, really excited about this because the, the possibilities are limitless here. Another thing that's really difficult to do in a virtual world is drawing. And in particular, writing requires extreme precision. The tip of that pencil Anton's using is being tracked at sub-millimeter accuracy. <laughs> no. So the, the pencil shows off the precision really well, but for something a little more artistic, Anton's going to move on to some more uh, paintbrushes here. He's actually metering out the amount of paint that's being put on the canvas using the analog trigger right now. Nice. <laughs> for something like a, a spray paint can, the angle actually matters of what he's doing here. Ooh, dripping right down the wall there, nice. Of course, you know, if you just want to mess around. <laughs> you can do that, too. So drawing is a kind of fundamental capability, but it doesn't have to be used literally. Let's see what else we got. You could use it instead, say, to lay out a path of objects. Oh, I'll uh -oh. help it out. You know, you could always try again. <laughs> Better. <laughs> Other things that use drawing are selection. Selection is one of the keys to something like a real-time strategy game. Finally, we have an interface on a console that lets us do real-time strategy. Here you can see Anton's lassoing troops, and then he draws a path for them to follow. You can imagine using this for other kinds of games, like football. You could draw out the route for a wide receiver to follow. <laughs> Blurring the lines between RTS and first-person shooter here. We, are, we already showed first-person shooter once, Anton. Well, it's always good. <laughs> All right. Anton's going to set up the next demo, and we're going to shift gears here a little bit. We're going to step out of our, our, our room here and move into a, a virtual arena. And we're going to show you some character control, actually. So as you can see here, my motions are mapped directly onto the character. When I move my, my sword and shield, he moves them exactly as I do. Hey, everybody. Of course, this is no good if you can't hit anything. So we've all seen lots of demos with swords and shields before, but the kind of precision Anton's getting here with the tip of that sword is just crazy. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Of course, we can do all the standard moves. We can thrust high, low, sweep, hit high. And this is one of my favorites. <laughs> How many years of kendo was that? <laughs> you can also use it in a defensive posture, too. <laughs> now this is a little bit different. Now we've shown you, you can see one-to-one -one Anton's hands moving, and the virtual hands move exactly as he does. <laughs> you can point and throw, no problem. You could reach around an enemy that's coming at you. He's doing behind the back. You can really do anything you want with this. Let's see here. Ooh. <laughs> now we're going to finish off with the, everyone's favorite in our lab's interface here, the archery mechanic. He reaches behind his back, pulls out an arrow, and knocks it. A 
Of course, the tension on the string matters, so the farther I pull it back, the more power I'm going to launch into this guy. <laughs> All right, Rick, call the shot. Uh, the farthest guy on the right there. Gangster style, yeah. Oof. Steady. Let me see if I can. Oh. Nice. Right, let's go for something a little bit more dramatic. There we go. <laughs> All right, last shot, last shot. All right. If you can't see here, something. Anton's actually dropping down to one knee, Robin Hood style, to finish this last shot. Ooh. Camera has no problems tracking him when he does that. All right. Well, I hope these real-time tech demos sparked your imagination. It certainly sparked the imagination of our development community. We're looking forward to sharing more about the motion controller with you in the near future. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See, not everything got out. This is going to be a really exciting part of PlayStation's future. So thanks to Rick and Anton for giving us an early glimpse today. Everyone should expect to hear more about PlayStation Motion Controller in the future and prepare for a launch in the spring of 2010. One of last year's biggest sensations was Sackboy and Little Big Planet. And since its launch last November, we've seen over 900,000 user-created levels played more than 200 million times. There's a lot more in store for Little Big Planet in 2009 including a Little Big Planet game coming to PSP and lots of new licensed content. Imagine dressing up your sack boy as a member of your favorite Disney characters, including Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean, <laughs> Cinderella, or even Mr. Incredible. And we'll be rolling out these costumes and more from Disney Interactive Studios on the PlayStation Network starting this fall. Now, you may, you may remember Little Big Planet's tagline from a year ago play, create, and share. It's also something you can sit down and play with your six-year-old daughter or your hardcore gaming friends. That was never intended to be just a tagline. It was the beginning of a whole new genre, something you could find only on PlayStation. And this is the first time where user-generated content, social networking, and gaming have come together in one place. PlayStation is, the best, is in the best position to evolve this category, and I'd like to introduce a new franchise today, our second, and one that is also exclusive to PlayStation 3. I'd like to welcome William Ho and James Grieve from United Front Games to show you the next great title in play, create, share genre. We call it Mod Nation Racers. <laughs> Two years ago, when we first heard the phrase, play, create, share, inspired me, us, and I'm sure most of you as well. It is much more than a catchphrase. It is a full-blown genre on the PlayStation. So what does play, create, share mean to a racing game designer like me? Well, I dream of a fresh racing adventure that anyone can pick up and play every day that empowers everyone to imagine and create whoever, whatever, and wherever you want to race, and invites everyone to the party whether you're with old friends in your living room or meeting new friends online. So today, we're proud to introduce to you Mod Nation Racers. It's a thoroughly modern take on classic kart racing. It's made only possible on a console as powerful and versatile as the PlayStation 3. Before we get to some racing, let's meet the racers of Mod Nation. I'm sure you've all seen these urban vinyl collectibles and designer toys made by companies like Tokidoki and Kid Robot and others. And what I think is really cool about them is artists you've never heard of before are expressing themselves in unlimited styles and becoming superstar designers in the process. So what we do in Mod Nation Racers is we empower you to express yourselves and to become superstar designers yourselves. So I created this character. His name is Monkey Butler. I've always wanted to have a Monkey Butler. I think he's pretty cool. So I've saved him, I've uploaded him. All of you can uh, download Monkey Butler and rate him. How'd you rate him, James? Not too high, Will, not too high. I don't know what's with you and this monkey guy. I think I got another outfit for him here, though. Hang on, that's a little better. That's cruel. So what kind of mod would you want to be, smart okay. guy? Let's take a look, let's see what we got. This guy's pretty cool. I don't know, though, he's not for me, though. I think I'm gonna go with this guy. 
Yeah. Okay, he's pretty cool, but uh, you gotta put him in my pink dune buggy, which I think is all right, you know. Pink is the new brown, you gotta like it. This guy needs a real race car, man. I'm sure we've got something better for him in here. Still a little pink, I think. Maybe we'll go with this guy. All right, that's a nice ride, James. I, I respect that. So while you're preparing, uh, preparing for your race, I'm just gonna tell everyone here that these are just a few of the unlimited uh, number of combinations that you can make in the game yourself. You can create, you can share, and remix them. So here we are in the game. Let's have some fun. Let's hit the track. When we set out to make Mod Nation Racers, we wanted to make the most gorgeous, most physical, most interactive car racing game you've ever seen. It starts with the graphics. We're harnessing the full power of the PS3. The results speak for themselves. We're also using real-time physics everywhere. The cart handling just comes alive. Surface changes like this old rickety bridge just feel right. And kicking your cart into drifts just feels sweet. All without sacrificing pick up and play control. We've got some weapons here. We've got a full arsenal of weapons that we're uh, introducing. Some with familiar play mechanics, others uh, from our secret labs that we're developing. Up ahead here, oh, take them out. Up ahead here, we're gonna see some of the more physical and interactive elements such as uh, this launcher, we've also got a stomper, we've got a, uh, we call it the Devastator. It takes out opponents, you feel the ripple, you feel them uh, uh, being taken out. This one you can re uh, activate remotely, and uh, oh, oh learn to drive, Coder Boy. Sorry. Sorry, better luck next oh. time. <laughs> so that's a bit of the racing in Mod Nation Racers. This track was made using a tool we call Track Studio. We wanted to empower racers like you to become creators, uh, creators yourselves. It's ridiculously easy to use. So we're gonna show you how it works. We're gonna blow away that track, which was made in Track Studio. We're gonna start a brand new track. We're gonna try to do this in record time in under five minutes. Are you up for it? See how we go, we'll All see right. how we go. So the reason why it's ridiculously easy to use is because we let you create by playing. And James is going to tell you what he's doing here. Like Will said, this is super easy. We're just using regular driving controls here. We've got elevation on the right stick so we can make some hills. And it's smart enough that if we cross over the track, it's going to, going to put in a little overpass or something for us. So we're going to keep this track pretty short, I think. Just make a little straight here. And then we'll bring it back to the finish line. We just have to drive back through the finish gate to close this off. All right, bring it home, James. So as he closes the loop, what's happened here is in seconds he's actually made a brand new functional racetrack. And as he enters test drive mode, we spawn AI opponents and he's racing and he's finding out how fun his track is right away. How's it feeling? Feels pretty good, I think. Feels pretty good. We better dress it up though. All right. So um, I, I kind of like off-roading. Can we add some dirt roads to our track? I think so. We've got something here for you. So we'll just select dirt from our palette here. And this is as simple as just dragging it out over the track. We can change the surface type. So that's pretty easy. All right, now we got to uh, put in a background. Why don't we start with some mountains? Can you okay. make some really big mountains? I'm I think a, we can do a that. Fan of big mountains. I think we got something here for you. We'll just make this brush a little bigger for you and just start pulling away here. This is really satisfying. Bigger. I love bigger. big mountains. They bigger remind, is always better. remind me of our home in Vancouver, British Columbia. They're beautiful mountains there. Nice. So I, I think we need to add some water. I think we can do that as well. We just turn the brush around and we'll just drag this out through here. And then we've got a lake for these guys. I think one last thing we're going to need to do here, though, is we're going to have to even out this hill here. So just make the brush a little smaller. And once again, we can just drag this around, and we'll bring up another hill. And we're all good. That's looking pretty good. One last thing while we're here. We'll go to our surface brushes. We've got a ton of surfaces to choose from. We're just going to go with some dirt around here today, and we can just spray this down like this. Nice and easy. All right. I think it's time to add some green. Can you make a forest? I think we got something here. Let's see. We'll go to our props. We'll just bring the cursor back through here. I think a couple of trees around this corner is probably gonna look pretty good. Ooh, so we'll just start around here and we'll just start laying these guys down. Once again, this is nice and easy. You just drag it out around the road. We can speed it up, come back into the middle here and we'll just fill out the center here and I think we're good. Nice. So that looks nice. But where do the Mod Nation racers live? I think we need to build a village for them. Yeah, I think we've got one of them in here. So this is in our palette, it's our village brush. Once more, we can just drag this thing around the side of the track and just start laying these down. We'll speed it up again. That's pretty satisfying. So now we're just gonna fill in the middle of the track as well, I think. There we go. That's awesome. I think that's probably pretty now, good. You know me, I'm kind of a reckless driver, so we need some objects I can smack through and maybe some weapons, weapons that I can pick up. I think we've got something here. We'll go with some safety cones around the inside here. That should make it nice and fun. 
And then I think we'll do a couple of weapons on the dirt section. So we'll just come back through to here, select our weapon pickup, place a couple of these down, and I'm going to drop in a little, little extra for myself just in case I get in trouble in this race. Cool. All right, I, I think we have to hurry up. Time's ticking. Uh, so, uh, I, one more thing, one more thing. Okay. Got to drop in what some of these doing, little guys. Man? I love these little guys. <laughs> okay. James. You, uh, you okay. have to forgive I'm my friend, now. he's I'm from done. Australia, so we'll, we'll indulge him. Yeah, I like mountains, he likes sheep. Okay, finishing touches. Okay. Bring it home. I think we're going to raise the water here. That lake's pretty cool, but I think it could be a bit higher. So we'll just, whoa, that's a little too high. We'll drop that down a bit. Uh, that's about right, I think. Last thing we're going to do here is we're going to put in a bit of a sunset. It's always nice. So we'll bring the sun around to this side, I think. Let's drop down a little so we can see it. Bring it down in the sky. That's probably a little too low, but we'll, we'll bring that up about there. I think that's going to be good for us. Awesome. So uh, why don't you go into test run mode and see how it is. What's just happened, folks, is James has created an original track from scratch. It's fully populated, fully lit. It's fully playable within seconds. And uh, now we're going to have some fun here. He can continue tweaking his track using a whole host of tools. He can save it to the uh, PS3 hard drive. He can upload it. Other people can play it online. He can even download it and remix it. Oh, these guys are tough. I'm going to have to take them out. I think you built a pretty tough track. You have to uh, strike back with your secret weapon. Yeah. Nice. Awesome demo, James. That was incredible. <laughs> I had to keep the faith there, James. I, even I didn't think you were going to get it done in five minutes. Uh, but, I do my best. You know, it, it would be amazing to see what you or anyone else here could do given more than five minutes on a stage here. So that's just a brief introduction to Mod Nation Racers. And uh, the passionate team back at United Front Games in Vancouver is working really hard on dreaming up more features that we're going to tell all of you about in the coming months. But in the meantime, what really drives us every day is dreaming what all of you are going to race, create, and share when the game is released in 2010. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good E3. Thanks very much, William and James. Now it's my pleasure to give you a sneak peek at another upcoming title being developed exclusively for PlayStation 3. It comes from the wildly creative minds of Fumito Ueda, whose previous games, Eco and Shadow of the Colossus, have as much heart and soul to them as they do action and adventure. Here's a new glimpse at Ueda-san's next masterpiece, the third title in the trilogy, known as The Last Guardian.
Now, 15 years ago, I don't think anyone could have dreamed how this next game would drive PlayStation sales into the stratosphere. Ladies and gentlemen, please feast your eyes on a short tease of Polyphony Digital's Gran Turismo 5. Speaking of game experiences that help separate PlayStation from every other console out there, and one of the reasons that we hold the 10-year value proposition so near and dear to our heart is due to this next franchise, which was produced, produced some of the best titles on the PlayStation 2 and PSP platform. This is one of the most eagerly anticipated games of this generation. I'd like to invite Stig Asmussen to the stage to show you the first few minutes of the jaw-dropping God of War 3. We at Sony Santa Monica Studios are excited to be able to present this live demo of God of War 3. God of War 3 is the final chapter in our fantasy trilogy based on the dark side of Greek mythology. We will see how the story of the gods, Titans, and Kratos ends. Kratos' sole purpose is to exact revenge on Zeus and all of Olympus, and he will do so in the most brutal fashion. I think this demo does a fantastic job of describing the energy and spirit of this brutal nature. Now our design director, Todd Pappy, will take point on the controls, and we'll get into our demo.
the wrath of the sun! I think it's best that everybody gets their hands on it. But, but the demo is now live on the show floor, and we have an extra 20 minutes of gameplay so you can see how it ends. God of War 3 is due for release March 2010. Thank you. So keep in mind, when you're playing God of War 3, this is an experience that's not just exclusive to PS3, it's only possible on PS3. With everything you've seen here today, I hope you'll agree, this is gonna be one of the biggest years in PlayStation history. Other companies ask you to imagine the future of gaming, and it's been our pleasure today to show you the future of gaming. It goes without saying that we're extremely proud of the lineup on our platforms this year. With everything from Blu-ray gaming to downloading and bringing your favorite content with you on the go, PlayStation is synonymous with innovation and entertainment. I assure you that we will never become complacent despite what we've accomplished, and we intend to ensure that when you think about great gaming, you think PlayStation. Thank you so much for your kind attention today and all the support you've given us through the years. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.